Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at active sonar. Now we've uh, talked a bit about sonar uh, many many moons ago and uh, fairly recently we were actually doing some videos on our lovely friends the diesel electric subs which have the uh, uncanny ability to literally make no noise. So of course uh, how do we find something that's underwater that makes no noise? And um, that, 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 that's <laughs> a bit of a mystery and if we were doing mine sweeping we'd have the uh, same kind of a problem. So what we've done here is uh, we've set ourselves up a little scenario to kind of uh, show you sort of the ins and outs of active sonar, as well as uh, some limitations, as well as kind of the downside to operating it. Now, some of you know active sonar from uh, playing some of the games like uh, Cold Waters or uh, Dangerous Waters. And basically what you're doing is you're taking a very, very low frequency uh, ping, if you want to think of an acoustic sound, and you're projecting it in all sorts of different directions and then listening for the echoes. Now, active sonar in the real world, of course, is a bit of an interesting process because everything is going to reflect that sound back, which makes uh, the digital signal processing side of the problem very real. Uh, for those of you who know Dangerous Waters, of course, uh, active sonar was like this magical device for detecting anything that was underwater at any time, at any position, at any depth, and having a pretty good idea of where it was as well. Now, over here in command, it's a little different, and uh, active sonar is not nearly as effective. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at some of the details of two different active sonar systems. Uh, we have the FFG-7, the Oliver Hazard Perry. Of course, there's uh, plenty of uh, British destroyers and frigates and Russian ones we use. But I'm sorry, when I think subs, I think this. And we'll take a look at what we have here. You're going to notice, uh, scrolling down here, that we have a couple different systems in the water here. We have this one hall sonar, active passive track. You can see it's late 70s technology, and it's the ANSQS-56. What do we know? Uh, we know that it's got a five mile range, which is embarrassing. And we know that it has a 15 second scan interval, which is actually probably fast. It takes a really, really, really long time for that sound to actually get back to us. The other thing we have over here is a lovely Sea Wolf. <laughs> you see what I did there. Now our Sea Wolf on the flip side is a little bit better equipped for this. And if we actually go down here, you will know that we have the BOQS 24 Midas, which is our little active only under ice navigation. And we also of course have the BQ Cube 1 Zero, which is going to be a 70 nautical mile range active and passive search and track. That's an incredibly long range. So let's go ahead and take a look at the competition real fast. Oops, let's go pop that sucker open real fast. Go over to switch to orange. So we have ourselves five submarines. Yeah, you can tell how well I can count on a Saturday morning. And we have ourselves all unarmed midget submarines. Now you're probably sitting here going, why did you pick narco subs for this purpose? Uh, the reason I picked narco subs is if you go to the unarmed midget submarine and scroll down here, you're going to see that their active sonar detection range. We have a eight decibel response from the front, 40 from the side, and then eight from the rear. Now, if you want to put that in perspective for a second, you know, let's go get the Typhoon, which uh, in my opinion is a little, um, uh, what's the best way to say this? Uh, probably a little tiny extreme here, but <laughs> if you ever needed an office building with a motor on the back of it, this is what it is. And if you take a look at the active sonar range on this thing, it's 40 decibels from the front, 300 from the side. So it's a very obvious target. But again, uh, we're going to demonstrate just how effectively ineffective all these things are. So let's swing back to a blue real fast. And uh, we have our two subs, and we're going to go ahead and fire up those sonars right away. Now, when I fire up the sonar in here, I'm going to go to sensors. I'm going to go uncheck this box. And you can see I have a couple of choices here. I'm active only under ice, not needed for me. But I also have hall sonar, active passive search and track. Click. That's it. That's the sound of it turning on because, you know, we don't, we don't have sound effects. So we're going to work with that. So coming over here, of course, uh, we want to do the same thing. Of course, uh, we can go down here and be lazy and click that button, but I'm just going to come here and push that one. So we are now both happily pinging away. Now, keep in mind our targets, we'll put on God's eye view here, are um, five or six miles away. You know, for those of you, of course, like I said, remember dangerous waters, you probably said, well, I can pick up somebody from 25 miles, like, you know, 36,000 yards or whatever. Um, yeah, that doesn't work that well in the real world. So we're pinging, we're uh, making noise, uh, we're dinging, and we're pinging, and we're making all sorts of noise here. We're floating around. Of course, I remember when you're using any type of sonar, the speed of the vessel pinging away will also have a big impact on how well it can detect things. Ideally, what I would actually do is tell my Oliver has a Perry here to come down to basically steerage or eight knots or something like that to basically reduce the self-noise of all this racket in the water. Now, let's switch over to the other team real quick here, and um, we're going to observe something. And the thing you're going to observe is the fact that we are currently detecting a 
a target with low frequency sonar beeping away at us. Now, not only are we detecting a target with low frequency sonar that is beeping away at us, but we have no idea of its speed or direction or anything like that. And our confidence idea, a little box here, that's a little polygon of how confident we are of its current position, is actually pretty decent. It's only about uh, two miles wide. Now, for those of you who are firing torpedoes into this particular zone location, this is more than enough of a targeting solution for an actively guided torpedo. So as you can see, uh, that's not good for us because we almost know exactly where my sea wolf is without having any concept of course where the frigate is. And uh, the reason for this is because whenever you are doing acoustic intercept on this, you're just listening for pings, it's always about twice the actual range of the ping. So that means if my sea wolf has a maximum ping range of uh, you know 70 miles here, that would mean I could detect it with an acoustic intercept out to about 140 miles. And of course, my Oliver has a Perry here who's pinging away happily. It's uh, got a much more limited range. It would be about 10 miles away you'd be able to hear his pings, just to give you an idea of the difference in how powerful the two systems really are. So as of right now, um, our little narco subs, if they had acoustic intercept, uh, knows exactly where my Seawolf is, and I'll have no difficulty attacking that one. So that's uh, not so good on the active sonar front. So let's go swing back to the other team real quickly here. I'm going to speed up time. Keep in mind, we're just ping, ping, ping into the water, making a ton of racket here. And um, I'm going to speed up time. Oh, we picked something up. Pause. Excellent. We've detected something. Happy days. So the first one we did is we picked this guy up right here. Uh, this is our goblin number one. He's doing five knots, and he's uh, pretty shallow, actually. And what you're going to observe, probably, if you go down through all these systems here, is the fact that we did pick it up on the active sonar before we picked it up acoustically. Remember, on a seawolf, you hear things behind you better because you've got that trailing wire. Uh, the other thing you'll probably observe is the fact that my Oliver Hazard Perry here is still completely clueless about the presence of it. Now, this one is a little bit more interesting. I'll go ahead and select that real quickly. And what you're going to observe here is that we have somebody not moving. We have them at a shallow depth, and we also have them just sort of chilling here. But we actually detected them at a range of six nautical miles, even though they're not actually moving. So that's actually a plus. And also notice, by the way, we have depth information, we have speed information. So what's the difference between these two? Uh -huh. This one is moving, which means we now get a Doppler shift to make it easier to detect it. This one, on the flip side, is at an interesting depth. Let's take a look at that depth. 131 feet, of course, is shallow. And if you take a look at our little kind of breakdown of depth here, that is, for us, just slightly under this lovely little acoustic layer. Yeah, remember that little uh, layer that causes uh, all sorts of uh, salt water density to change depending on what it is? Acoustic sounds ricochet off of it, which actually limits our range. So believe it or not, there's another sub right here that we still have not even detected yet because of a different problem, and that's because of its depth. Now, if I come over to the sub and actually click on it right now, you'll see that it's at a depth of 196.9 feet. Uh, that's negative, by the way. This sub is sitting on the floor of the ocean right now, which means all this racket that we're making here is being basically not absorbed. It's being ricocheted off of whatever nice soft bottom we have here. Uh, it's, uh, I think this is mostly sand here. It'll be either sand or probably lots of icky mud. Sometimes you get stone, which makes it a little bit more chaotic as far as trying to listen to what we're hearing there. So even though it's a physically closer target than that one, we can't pick it up because all of our sound is basically bouncing off the acoustic layer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my sub again. I'm going to actually order him to go down. I'm going to order him under the layer here, which for him is uh, just a little bit deeper. And so again, just trying to get underneath that little acoustic layer there. Go ahead and speed up time again. Notice we're having no difficulty, by the way, acquiring this particular sub because this particular sub is uh, making a ton of racket. And again, these are not loud submarines. That's why I picked them. And we can see we are still completely, utterly clueless uh, to the presence of these other subs. Also notice, by the way, our Oliver Hazard Perry here, who's been tip-tapping this entire time, is utterly unaware of anything that's uh, going on around them. So I'm going to go ahead and give us a little bit of time here. Again, I'll try to enjoy our little uh, hunting around. 15x. Again, a uh, good thing uh, the Coast Guard is uh, being polite to us today. And remember, they said it's awfully slow warfare. Oh, we picked something up. Stop. So we finally detected this guy. Notice, by the way, we detected him at a depth of minus 197. His speed is zero. Uh, the other thing that's worth noting here is if you actually look, the Sea Wolf detected them, not the Oliver Hazard Perry, even though the Oliver Hazard Perry was here. Remember, all those pings and pangs as ricocheting right now is basically bouncing off of that nice little acoustic layer. And you can actually see by my little tooltip here that it's between minus 70 and minus 120. So we're basically making a ton of noise for almost nothing. Um, we're not going to be able to achieve much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Sea Wolf. I'm actually going to order him to go over here. I'm going to grab this guy, and I'm going to do one of these things with him. And you're probably wondering why. Uh, you'll see in a second. 
So my other house of power is turning here. You know, he's up pinging away, pinging away, trying to detect. And I actually want my sea wolf to get out of there. And now the reason I want to do that is because I want to give this particular one a particular chance to take a shot. Notice, by the way, the one that we now have a perfect beam on, we've completely lost acoustically here. It's gone. Oh, we reacquired it. And you can see we reacquired it with our handy dandy little uh, wide aperture array that we're basically listening to behind the sea wolf here, which doesn't surprise me. Notice, by the way, we've completely lost track of this target here because we're no longer pointing. Oh, we notice we're just a little outside of our baffles here, so we can't hear it very well. But notice our original one that we've acquired, oh, we still can see. So Oliver has a pair is pinging away, pinging away, pinging away, still cannot find this sub, even though it's right on top of it. Uh, the total distance here is um, about, a, about almost less than a kilometer, about a kilometer or so. So even if we were to take my Oliver Hazard Perry and just do one of those things, and then of course we're going to go fly over here so you can see the next problem that sonar, we still have no idea, and that just gives you an idea. Now, the cool thing here is we've actually picked up another sub, and that's our good buddy uh, Goblin number four here. This one was also detected by the Seawolf at a range of about four miles. So um, remember, this one right here is at a depth of 131, which is just inside of the layer. This one over here that we picked up is actually just below the layer. Now, remember, our handy dandy Seawolf now, since it's under the layer with it, it has a much easier time of spotting stuff at its depth. So we're actually able to acquire this one reasonably. I guess if you want to call it reasonably, I, I, I don't even know. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn my Seawolf around here. He's, he's done a great job. Now, one cool trick that Active Sonar has is the fact you can hear things and see things that are next to you. And uh, one of the kind of fun little problems that we can generate here is the fact that because we can see things next to us, again, that means kind of out of being here, we have the ability to set ourselves up in a targeting situation where it's easy for us to avoid incoming weapons at the same time as still being able to basically see things that are to our side here. So for example, if I wanted to engage this sub right here, I'm already basically in a perfect spot to track the projectile that I'm launched at it. And if it fires back at me, I'm able to hear anything coming in at it because I can actually look basically out the side if you wanna think about it another way. So we're gonna go spin ourselves around. A great example of this, by the way, is right here. You can see that I can still see this sub because I know that it's there because of the reflection. And this guy right here, he's just easy because now we're listening to his propeller from behind him, which makes that a little bit easier. So we're gonna go ahead and speed up time again here. And we're looking for that last sub. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go, we're gonna go. The Alvar has a parry. Remember, he's running full acoustic active uh, sonar right now. And he's, he's not picking up anything. That's why I love these subs because they, they generate my points perfectly. Go ahead and uh, do one of those things. We'll get him out of the way. Meanwhile, my Seawolf is uh, doing his thing. He's doing his thing, doing his thing. Ah, he picked something up. What's this? Ah, we actually detected him at a range of zero with my Oliver Hazard Perry, just to give you an idea of how poor that active sonar system is. So I'm actually going to dump this guy. I don't like you anymore. I'm dumping you. Speed up time here. Whoop. Looks like our Seawolf didn't even acquire this guy. Go ahead and speed up time again here. All right, let's get going. All right. And notice, we still cannot acquire this guy. There he is. Ha <laughs> ha. And we acquired him at a staggering range of 1.3 nautical miles. Again, the reason for this in this particular case is because of that depth. Now, a lot of people are saying, um, what does aspect got to do with it? You know, is aspect uh, something that we need to think about when it comes to um, preventing ourselves from being detected? And the answer is kind of. Um, so for in this particular case, because of the actual... Um, if you want to think surface area, the side of the sub is so small based on the nose or the side, it didn't make a big difference for us. But if we were to go ahead and uh, grab out one of those typhoons, uh, we'll go scoop one of those things up real quick, just for the purposes of demonstration. Boop, boop, boop. Let's grab this one real fast. Let's grab this. Oh my God, this thing's ready to go. Oh my God, folks, do not have this as the default feature. So we're going to go ahead and order this one to a complete stop. And we're going to go ahead and order this one to go ahead and turn so we can demonstrate our concept here. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> Where are you going? You don't need to be engaged defensive. There's nothing over there. Stop that. Oh, by the way, if you want to disable that, uh, you just have to go over here and go, no, bad, bad. Now notice, of course, he went engaged defensive against this. Nit. I didn't order you to surface my, 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 my guy, my guy. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, let's order this guy to a stop. Let's order this guy to go this way and also order him to a stop. Now, the one thing I wish you could do is if you press the move key, it just automatically acquires the next heading, but that's perfectly fine. So what we're going to do now is uh, grab my handy dandy little uh, sub. We're going to use the sub for this because the sub's going to do a lot better job of this. So I'm going to take the sensors and I'm going to go ahead and shut them off real quickly here. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one real fast. I'm going to go ahead and adjust ourselves so we're like this, and then we're going to come make our way that way. All right, let's get in position. Wee, wee. And we can see we have the two typhoons. Remember, these typhoons are huge. So uh, we're going to approach one of them from the side, and then we're going to try to go ahead and approach the other one from the front to see if it really makes that much of a difference. 
And get ready for pause. Pause. Let's see here. So we detected this one with the arc five victor here. If we go down here, that is our active. We picked him up actively before we picked him up passively. The other thing you can see is we picked him up at a range of about 5.2. Remember, we're looking at this sub perfectly at a 90 degree beam. So let's go ahead and grab him again. Get over here. Let's uh, hope the uh, big subs are not making so much noise. We won't be able to pick them up fairly. So let's go ahead and unpause here. And we went and acquired that one almost immediately. Let me back this up a little bit. That's about five. Let's go a little bit further back here. That's better. Let's go ahead and dump both of these because they don't want to look at them until I can see them. Nice. Good timing on my part. And you can see we picked them up at about the same range. Now, that's just one of those things that it feels like that doesn't make sense. But remember, to be able to overwhelm everything is going to be at the square of the distance. So even though you can see we got him on the nose at six nautical miles, and we also got him at the beam at about the same distance. And again, that's part of the fun of uh, using active sonar. Now, this entire time, by the way, if we actually if we go back over here, you would note the fact that we have a very, very, very confident position of our incoming submarine, which makes it pretty useless. Now, one of the fun things we can do, of course, uh, with this uh, sonar technology and kind of playing with it is we can do a, a fake shot and uh, basically trick people into making a ton of noise. So if I were to sit in here and let's say I accidentally uh, fired a torpedo, uh, fired a torpedo over here, and let's say I accidentally fired a torpedo over here. Let's go ahead and grab my sub real quickly here. I'm going to slow this thing down just a little bit. That uh, creeps fine, creeps fine. And we're going to let it fire. <laughs> you can see that we can trial our basically reconnaissance by fire. Enjoy.